What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the Pokemon Yellow Nuzlocke series. This is episode 9, and in this one I want to see some comments drop down below. Just to get you started, here is a question of the day. How do you feel about the new layout? I know it's not perfect, but it's a step in the right direction, and I'm excited to change these up in the future Nuzlocke series that we do on this channel. While we're here, make sure to smash that like button, and hit subscribe as well as the little bell so that you guys are always informed when I post new content. But for now, let's get into it with a team recap. We have Zilla at level 16. That is our Nidoran, who will eventually be a Nidoking. I'm very happy about that. We have Suds here at level 16, our Squirtle. Brenna, our Charmeleon, level 25. Cheeks, 26. Nubbin, our Doug Trio now at level 27. And Monsta at level 14. And obviously, if you guys didn't see the last episode, spoiler alert, but we did lose our drowsy, which was super unfortunate. We're going to go ahead and cut this tree down. All right, and we are going to continue down this path and head straight for the dark tunnel. What you got, buddy? Come on. Give my Nidoran some experience. Come on, do it. I dare you. And this is the first time I am recording in the morning, so I've got my nice cup of coffee here. I apologize if you guys hear any slurps. I'm a big slurper, unfortunately. Um, but I will try to keep that to a minimum. Doesn't ever sound very good over the audio recording. Yeah, go ahead, miss your attacks. Double kick will just destroy this Geodude here. We are five levels... Wait, why did that do so much less? I'm a bit confused. That's fine, this Geodude can't seem to hit any attacks, so... Oh my god, okay. Our Nidoran's just juking. Add insult to injury, just take you down with a normal attack. Die, Geodude. Onyx comes out. I love the Onyx sprite. Onyx, you know, honestly, Onyx doesn't get enough credit. Sure, they made him a terrible Pokemon. But he's still super, super cool. And let's not forget, we did uh, get the Crystal Onyx. Now, granted it didn't stick around or anything, but it exists. That's the important thing here. Okay, let's just go ahead and switch out of this bind, because I don't trust bind. I'm going to Squirtle. Bam. Oh! Not a Squirtle. War Tortle. That's right. Duh. Level 16. I should have known that. And... I'm just going to demolish this onyx real quick, or he can bind us again. And honestly, I'm going to just go ahead and say, I don't even care so much about the likes on the video. Of course, they're great to get, but I care way more about the comments. Uh, I haven't even received many comments, but the ones that I have received uh, just make me feel so much better, to be honest. It gives me a way to interact with you guys, and that's kind of what I care about doing on this platform. I want to interact with my viewers, and if you guys are leaving comments, that means you're enjoying the content. You're sticking around long enough to actually bother leaving a comment. Uh, so let's try to focus on getting those comments up. I want to have some cool conversations with you guys. Zilla is evolving! Wait, at level 16? That's so sick! Alright. So Zilla, the Nidorino... Hello, hello. Now the question is going to be, at what point do we level him up into Nitto King? Uh, I don't really have a way to go on Cerebi or anything right now and check his moveset. Uh, but I do know that Stone Evos typically don't learn any good moves. But I can't remember if Nitto King himself learns any good moves uh, in this generation. So I will probably hold off on evolving him until I get a chance to kind of just look up his moveset and make sure I'm not messing up. Super bug Pokemon. All right. Well, in this gen, Poison Sting, the move that we just learned, is going to be super effective against bugs. So this is just going to be a ton of experience for Nidoran or Nidorino. God, I'm really off today. Messed up on two of my Pokemon. All right. So, you know, Poison Sting's not a super great move. Not doing a ton of damage, that's okay. I'm gonna just take down this Caterpie. All right, Caterpie goes down. Nice, nice, Weedle comes out. So we are not going to be super effective here. We're just gonna go for the horn attacks. 
And Weedle goes down, two horn attacks, not bad. Didn't take too awful long. And we get a Venonat, another poison bug combo. Bam, crit. Oh, confusion, that sucks. Oh, I don't like that. Oh, of course he crits too, that is terrifying. Let's go ahead and play this safe, go into Brenna. Get the hell out of there. Hate to see it. And just finish you off with an ember. Bam, Venonat down. Awesome. And I'm not gonna walk all the way back to the Pokemon Center, I'm just gonna use a few potions and we'll continue moving along. So as you guys know, or maybe you don't know if this is the first video of mine that you're watching, but I live in Iceland. And I gotta tell you, lately it has not been very icy here. It's been pretty warm. Uh, and of course we don't have any air conditioning here, so that's something that I'm still trying to get used to. I can't really control that. All I can do is turn off the radiators and I hope I don't sweat to death. But I, you know, it's a good thing that I don't have a face cam because I am mostly naked right now. I'm not going to lie to you guys, it's pretty warm. Um, that's the great thing about YouTube. I can sit here and actually do work and be completely naked and no one knows. Level 18, alright. And Machop comes out, that's fine. You are going to be less than effective against us, I think. Pretty sure fighting is resisted by poison, and it is. Fantastic, we're just gonna go for a horn attack. That was a crit? Wow, Machop is bulky. Okay, I'm gonna get out of here, that's right, I forgot. Um, hmm. Just go into Brenna. So this is actually the second episode that I'm recording using OBS. Up until this point, I've only been using QuickTime. Uh, I was a little afraid to branch out and go for OBS, especially because I had no idea how big OBS was, how much RAM that it required, and I am filming all of these videos using uh, both my iPhone and a MacBook Air from 2015. So I am not the most well-equipped YouTube content creator uh, by any means. Uh, I was a little afraid that OBS would cause some issues with my computer. Uh, mostly just because I'm at the limit for its software capacity, or very very close to its limit for the software capacity. Um, and I didn't want to overload my computer and not be able to record at all. But in episode 8, I finally made the jump up to OBS, uh, and it is doing very, very well for me so far. I highly recommend it as a screen capture software, uh, and if I come across any problems, you guys will be the first to know. You'll be able to see them, I'm sure. So, I've already lost one of my favorite Pokemon, and I'm not going to lose another. At least not for a long, long time. Zilla's gonna see us all the way through to the Elite Four. At least I hope so. You know, now that I'm sitting here thinking about it, I'm not even sure that I answered my own question of the day last time. In the last episode, I believe I asked you guys what your favorite film was, uh, and I just didn't answer that question. And if you guys didn't see that episode, I'm gonna go ahead and put a little uh, link to it at the top of this video. Go ahead and click on that, uh, so you can see what kind of got us here, and so you can answer that question. I wanna know what your favorite film is, still. Uh, currently my favorite film is The Seventh Seal by Ingmar Bergman. That's held the number one spot in my mind for a couple of years now. Um, but I'm a huge, huge fan of like old, uh, well not old, but like, I'll, I'll just say classic. Uh, classic Scandinavian cinema is really, uh, in the upper echelon of the films that I like. I just like their stylized Methods, I'm a huge fan of Sven Nyqvist, uh, who's their director of photography. 
So yeah, my current favorite film is going to be The Seventh Seal. Route 9, Rock Tunnel, Route 10. Yes, indeed. This counts as another area. We get one more encounter right up here before we enter Rock Tunnel. So let's go ahead and see what that's going to be. And we get a Machop. All right, Machop is going to be our encounter for Route 10. Welcome to the squad, Norris. That's right. And we are not skipping this trainer. We are going to use her and grab some experience as soon as we get suds to the front of the party. All right, what you got for me, lass? Oh, junior trainer. Doesn't really matter, I guess, but a Jigglypuff comes out, and this one probably still knows Sing, uh, since the daycare man made mine forget it. Kinda angry about that. Just gonna bubble. All right. Now, I've never really liked Jigglypuff and Clefairy, and I've never really used them in a playthrough. Now, I know I caught the Jigglypuff, so we do have a Jigglypuff available to us, uh, so, later on in the playthrough, I might try to use Jigglypuff. Um, I know that Wigglytuff is an absolute tank. Its defense I don't think is very great, but it just has so much HP that the, the defense doesn't even matter. Uh, so I might use Jigglypuff, especially as like some kind of special wall later on in the playthrough, uh, but I have not decided yet. Just can't have anything. Ah. Clefairy! Please don't sing. Wait, I don't think Clefairy even knows saying. What am I worried about? Oh, and I do have two Moonstones, so that means I'll be able to get my Zilla to evolve into Nidoking, and I'll still have one for Jigglypuff, so that's actually good news. And Rock Tunnel. Nice. Now, I've heard if you talk to Pikachu, he will kind of do a flash for you anyways. Nope. Apparently not. I don't want to teach anybody Flash. And we get a Zubat as our encounter, hold on. I just realized that I haven't caught a Zubat yet because I missed the original encounter in Mount Moon. So we're just gonna weaken up the Zubat and throw a Pokeball. This is our encounter, guys. All right, and Zubat finally joins the squad. That's awesome. All right, we're going with Mina, the Vampire Bat. That's right, making Zubat cooler than she needs to be. Just gonna go ahead and pop on a Repel, I think. Because I know we have quite a few trainers in here, don't have to worry about the experience game. And I've got quite a few Repels. Now, question is, oh, talking to Pikachu again, didn't even mean to do that. Uh, the question is, as I was saying, oh, no. Okay, yeah, I think you still do see the exclamation marks when a trainer challenges you. Sorry, my commentary is all over the place for this episode, guys, but... Alright, there we go. So you do not see the exclamation marks. We have a battle with a trainer here. And it's going to be Pokemaniac. These guys usually carry Slowpoke, so we gotta be mindful of that at least. And they are pretty damn high level. Cubone at level 23. We're playing a little risky here keeping suds on the field, but if we can hit a few super effective water guns here, maybe get a crit, that would be really nice. Growl comes off with it, which of course at this point is going to do nothing to hamper us. All right, managed to get through the Cubone without taking any damage, so that's really good. And there's the slow poke. Oh, what, what am I doing? It just used confusion. I'm so stupid. But then that never happened. Go cheeks! 
I need to stop taking such a long break in between playing this game. Which today I'm going to do some batch recording, so... Plan to get quite a bit done today, actually. I hope this is still entertaining for you guys just watching me walk through this black mass of a cave. Um, I'm actually not sure how I'm going to approach this. Maybe I'll just try to cut around it a little bit more. Um, and of course Thunderbolt is the thing that gets disabled. Great, so well, let's just go ahead and double team I guess. Oh, okay. Sure. <laughs> This is a level 25 slowpoke, though. This is no joke. Please. Alright, almost a one-shot. And we get the Paris, so that's nice. Cool, cool. This is a little bit scary, actually. I don't know how many super potions I have. So I have five super potions. We should be okay. Uh, the only thing I'm concerned about, though, is if we do run out of those, Trying to get back to the Pokemon Center is going to be a little bit problematic. And another trainer. Okay. Are you another... Nope, not another Pokemaniac. Nice. Wait, this is the grass. Aha, the grass trainer has arrived. Yes, indeed, I remember you. I'm just gonna go straight into Brenna. And I'm shocked, actually, that it still takes two embers to knock down a grass Pokemon that's four levels lower than me. My special must just be ass. Ah! Oh, Bulbasaur! This is my first time seeing the Bulbasaur sprite head on. I really like it. That's a nice sprite. The sprite work in yellow is just a step beyond, in my opinion. This is some of the best sprite work in the Pokemon games. Of course, I really like the, I think it's Gen 4 sprites as well. You know, I know Gen 4 remakes are coming out later this year, and everybody's super hype about it. But I've never actually been a huge Gen 4 fan. Uh, I don't know what it is, uh, but both Gen 3 and Gen 4 are probably my least favorite regions. I know in Gen 3, it's just the encounter table is terrible. I hate the encounters in Gen 3. I don't know what it is about Gen 4 that bothers me. I, maybe it's the pacing of the story. Uh, I'm not really sure. I'll have to revisit that question when we wind up doing our Gen 4 playthrough uh, on the channel. Uh, so I can actually figure out what it is about the fourth generation I don't like all that much. Uh, and it is my plan to be up to Gen 4 for the release of the DP remakes. And of course, when we do our Gen 4 Nuzlocke, it will be utilizing the DP remakes on the Switch. So you guys will have uh, a better viewing experience, and we can work through Chibi Sinnoh. Charmander! Oh, you're so adorable. The baby. Water the baby. Right, gonna get through the Charmander. Level 20. This is just a playground for suds here. What's with all the status drops in this episode? I feel like most of the trainers that we fought have just tried to drop our stats. I remember that Onyx did that. And then the Cubone earlier was also just growling at us, I think, or leering or something. What's up with all the stat drops? Attack me. Continue on through the Black Abyss here. Don't know what I'm doing. Oh, another trainer. Hiker, all right, Geodude, all day. Send me out all the Geodudes. Level 25, don't care. Don't care, just don't blow up. Love to see it. All right, now, is there someone up ahead here with an Onyx? I think there is. If we ever get there. Can't ever tell if I've just walked into a wall or if I've walked into a trainer's eye line. Onyx, all right. More really good experience for suds here. Just gonna work on the bubbles because we're running out of water guns and we get bound, of course. Uh, why are you so fast? Bubble was enough! Alright, we one shot the Onyx. Great. Another Onyx. Uh, don't bind me. Okay. 
feel kind of bad for not training up Nidorino, but we need to get Suds up too. And Suds' usefulness is not going to continue for very long, because of course we have Erica coming up and we're not going to be able to use Wartortle at all for that. Um, so I think it makes sense to try to get Suds as much experience in Rock Tunnel as we possibly can. It's hard to watch the OBS screen. Oh! Trainer. Okay. Pretty sure you guys don't want to just sit here and watch me take on Geodude after Geodude, so I'll just cut through all of this. A oh, Graveler, okay. That's really terrifying, actually, because you are likely to explode. Gonna just take you out in one shot here, please. Please? Okay, good. Graveler goes down. Level 24. And we have a Bitey Turtle now. Turtles do actually bite, and they bite hard. Uh, not even snapping turtles. All turtles bite. Really? No items? That's so hard to believe. Why would you design this dead-end Pokemon? Have we really gained nine levels on Wartortle since entering this cave? I think we have. I think we started off at 16. Ah! Trainer. Every time I get stalled, I don't know what I've run into, and it's always a trainer. It's never an item. Bellsprout! Alright. Gotta go into Brenna for this. And we get flamed. Great. Right, in this game you can't just smash A. You have to be very careful. I've actually lost a Pokemon due to that already, I'm pretty sure. Ember, hope for burns. Found, okay. And we get the burn, nice. All right, so on this next turn, I think we're just gonna use an antidote. Let the burn kind of take its toll a little bit here. I'm just gonna be super careful about these poisonings. So I feel pretty confident right now. Suds has got all the way up to 26. That's 10 levels on Suds. I think that's good for now. So we'll just go ahead and put Zilla back at the front of the party. Man, this is hard recording early in the day for me. I get so antsy. Like, I feel like I should be doing something different than this. Thankfully, I really enjoy playing these games. So I have a friend who actually started a YouTube channel at the same time I did. And uh, he recently reached out to me and said that he was kind of struggling to find ideas for his content. Uh, and asked me, like, how I was doing it, how I was staying so consistent. Actually, I don't know if he actually asked me that or if I just kind of projected that he asked me that. Uh, but regardless, uh, the answer to that question is that I just really enjoy this content. In my first video on YouTube, I said that I wasn't really doing this to gain followers or gain attention in any way, shape, or form. I just wanted to fill my time with creating content in a space that I really actually just enjoy. I, I love Pokemon, and I know it's, a, it's kind of a crazy thing to spend so much time creating content for a Pokemon channel right now. I mean... Uh, let's be honest here, if you're gonna watch Pokemon content, you're not gonna come and watch my content. You're gonna go and watch, like, Vinny, uh, or Dylan, or Luke, or, or Patters, or any of these other guys, uh, rather than just, you know, a channel with, what, what, I have 17 followers now? Um, so I'm not doing it for follows. I'm not doing it for attention or anything like that. Of course it would be really lovely if one day I can make some money doing this, sure. Uh, but the point is that I've started a YouTube channel in a space making content about a subject that I care about, that I enjoy. Uh, and that would be uh, some great advice for anybody who's looking at starting a YouTube channel. Uh, and that is just focus on something that you enjoy. That way the metrics don't matter as much as they would if you were starting simply with the intention of monetizing your videos and 
uh, making a job out of this. I think you have to approach YouTube in a way that, like, if it so happens that in the future enough people like your content that you can make it a job, then that's great. But you can't go into it with that being the expectation, or you're just setting yourself up for a little bit of upset. Alright guys, so we have made it through the rock tunnel, uh, so that is going to be where I end off for today. Make sure you guys are smashing that like button, and be sure to answer the question of the day. I want to use those questions to start some conversations, so make sure you answer those in the comments down below, and I will see you guys next time.